Good morning, folks. NASA's full video is linked for you below, but it's their explanation of how reconnections drive major space weather. They show how one coronal event can trigger another. Here is the lines snap together and release a solar flare. This is exactly what you saw in Space Weather 101, how to watch the sun. Coming to Neptune, Hubble has discovered a new moon. Voyager missed it a few years back on flyby. Interesting astrobiology article here on core rotation and length of day. Apparently there are subtle oscillations over time, but then there are abrupt shifts with major magnetosphere changes. As a reminder, 2003 saw our magnetosphere 10% weaker according to NASA, and if its fading is in scale with the magnetic pole shift up north that they're tracking, make that number around 20% now. The June State of the Climate Report is out, looks back at last month detailing the precipitation, temperature deviations from normal, significant trends, events, and commentary. Across the Pacific, Sakurajima is pumping out low, slow, steady eruptions but appears to be signaling an uptick. South of that, we are looking at the storm cells mentioned yesterday headed to southwest Australia. The watches are already in effect. Convergence lines appear north of Europe or beginning to crest onto land now. The energy south has shifted east from Spain and Italy onto Greece. Top story in the U.S. That would be a clockwise spinning storm system moving east to west across the United States. We do indeed have a major high pressure cell there. And it's a rainmaker only for the most part, but I still cannot claim to have seen anything like that before. Bartol Neutron Monitor, still down, the muon still lagging. Check the South Pole stations below if you like, especially Newark. Solar wind spent the day calming down. The magnetic storm was over nearly as I reported it. Green in the later hours signaling quiet. If you look top right, back here at the solar wind, we did take one brief density wave that was of very high energy. Remember, low energy spikes are regular and not a big deal, but we like the small and brief nature of this high energy event. Solar flaring still can't muster an M flare, and it's not for lack of potential. This delta spot is maturing, and I bet we see another contender developing here today. The newcomer up north likely has significant mixing between the spreading large umbras, but no flares no matter. The little sea flares are proving capable of ejection as well. You are seeing two CMEs in succession leave the south central active region and then a filament eruption just north of it. All with good chances of earth impact, but I'm still waiting for the endless spirals and satellites. Something for which we are no longer waiting. Two days into this major quake watch with the northern coronal hole facing earth more squarely now a 7.3 magnitude earthquake struck the south sandwich islands there was no tsunami produced. There was also rare shaking north of Iceland in the Greenland Sea. We had a near six-pointer in Tonga as well. And Alaska continues its low magnitude swarming. We got delta spots, incoming plasma filaments, CMEs on their way, and the quake watch continues. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.50 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.